Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Another year has just passed, so in this video let's check out a quick summary of the best videos from 22. Tons of interesting and unique videos this year, in total 142 videos, that's quite a lot. I try to cover tons of topics so there's lots of variety. There's a bunch of tutorials, including some free course line tutorials, a bunch of extremely important marketing videos, lots of interesting systems, top new games and assets, I also launched my most detailed course ever, all about writing good clean code, teaching you advanced concepts, as well as some free updates to my Ultimate DMT Overview course. And just before the end of the year, I also announced my next Steam game, Total War Liberation. So lots and lots of stuff this year. This list is mostly my own videos since that's what I'm most familiar with, but stick around to the end where I will also highlight some great tutorials and great channels from other creators that you should follow. I made a page on the website where you can find links to all of these videos, all of them nicely grouped into categories so you can watch them later. And this is actually the third year that I'm doing a video like this, so if you want to get a quick overview of what I made in 2020 or 2021, then go ahead and watch those videos. To prepare for this video, I rewatched those myself. It's really quite impressive how many total videos I've done. It's already over 650. Quite a lot of really awesome ones that you might not know about if you just found this channel recently. Alright, so let's look at some highlights. Going back through all of these to make this video was quite the journey. Sometimes it feels like one year is such a short amount of time, but looking at this list, I can't believe so many of these were done this year. It really feels like a lifetime ago. The very first video this year was a game design analysis of the game Nimbatus. It's a really interesting game. And also, as I was playing that game, I decided to recreate the shipbuilding system. So I did a bunch of interesting live streams working on that, culminating in the final spaceship constructor system. This was really fun to make. The system is really adaptable and allows you to build some really interesting ships. Building a system like this one is really great if you want to build up your own programming skills. You can download the project files for that project to see how I set up the code in this very modular system. There were tons of individual tutorials. Everything from drawing pixels, how to make multiplayer games with netcode for game objects, how to get started with Unity Dots, inspect items and objects, do a backstab mechanic, character customization, pick up and drop items, and many more. This channel started 5 years ago and my main goal was always making tutorials to share knowledge that I had acquired over the many years that I was making games all by myself. And as of today, making tutorials is still very much a central part of this channel. In fact, just last year I actually won a really awesome Unity Award for Best Tutorial Creator. This was actually voted on by the community, so thank you to all who voted for me. My goal is to keep being worthy of your votes, to keep making many more awesome tutorials to help you on your own game dev journey. So this year there were tons more tutorials. But actually, before I get to those, I really want to highlight one of the most important videos that I've ever done. I titled it The Most Important Game Dev Skill to Be a Successful Indie Dev, and I really mean that. The video is not about programming or game design or art. Instead, it's about the one thing that is super important but most people ignore it, and that is marketing. Nowadays, if you want to be successful, you really need marketing. I'm sure some of you don't like hearing that. I'm also not much of a fan of doing marketing myself, but that is the reality. If you're just making games as a hobby on the side, then maybe you can ignore it, but if you really want to be successful in today's market, definitely make sure to watch that video. In there I talk about all kinds of strategies and numbers you need to hit if you want to hope to be successful. Related to that is another great video, it's titled Does a Good Game Sell Itself? And it's a case study on what happens if you just focus on making a game and completely ignore marketing. You can see how just making a good game is not enough nowadays. Since we're talking about marketing, I should obviously point out my own game, Total War Liberation. Go ahead and add it to your wishlist. Wishlists are one of the primary metrics for success that I mentioned in that marketing video, so that is why I'm asking you to wishlist my game. Announcing this game was actually a huge deal for me. It's been 3 years since I launched my last Steam game, so I've been wanting to make another one for a long time. I'm really excited about the game idea, I really think this will turn out really well. In the announcement video, I made sure to write down what are my goals for this project. It's going to be really fun to revisit those goals in a couple of months to see if I manage to hit them. Part of the reason why I chose to make this specific game is because I really like this genre, turn-based tactics, and there are some things that I'd love to explore within that genre, like a large persistent open world, many units, and some automation elements. And as you know, this game is based upon my turn-based strategy course. Building that course was one of the big challenges of the past year. It was a massive amount of work, I nearly went crazy in the 5 months that I was building it, Thankfully, I'm extremely happy with the final result. If you want to level up your own game dev and programming skills past the beginner stage, then I can highly recommend you get that course. It is written just like I write my own Steam games. So by choosing to make my next Steam game based on the game built in the course, that is also an excellent practical example so that you can see what you can build if you follow any kind of course and then build upon it. 
Since I focus so hard on making the course code as clean as possible, it has actually been really easy to continue working in that same codebase, adding all of the mechanics that I want to add. I've already published the first devlog just a few weeks ago, and in there you can see just how many mechanics I was able to add in such a short period of time. The reason why I was able to do that is because the course code is so clean. So I'm really excited about this game. The goal is still to launch sometime in Q3 of this year. The big challenge is working on the game alongside making regular videos. I have to say that so far this has indeed been quite a challenge, but I do think it's getting a bit better. And last year I also made a really interesting video showcasing all of the assets that I'm using to build this game. So if you're the kind of person who buys tons of assets but don't know how to use them in a proper game, go watch that video to see which assets I'm using and how. Related to that was a really awesome video titled Should You Use Assets? In there I research a bunch of games published on Steam that are clearly using assets, and I look at the reviews to see if any players are calling the game an asset flip or anything like that. And the answer is no, players only want good games to play, they don't care what assets you use to build the game. That is why I'm not scared of using assets in my own game to bring my vision to life, and you shouldn't be either. You should use whatever tools and assets are at your disposal to bring your game ideas to life. Now in terms of tutorials, like I said, quite a lot of them covering all kinds of things, everything from super basic to some really complex. For example, a super basic one explaining the differences between game objects and transforms, specifically the differences when you use one versus the other in an instantiate call. For me, I usually use transform for my prefab references, and there's always someone who asks why not use game objects. So that's an example of a really basic tutorial, but still very useful to people who don't know these specific nuances. The very first tutorial of the year was a great one, all about drawing pixels inside Unity. This is great for modding or allowing the player to add their mark to the world. As usual, this was based on code from my really awesome grid system, which I first started building all the way back in 2019. So here we are many, many years later, and the code that I wrote back then is still very useful. Speaking of the grid system, I also made a bunch of tutorials related to making a hex grid system. The first one is actually not really related to the grid system, it's just on exploring the map to test if a point is inside a hex. I researched this because I thought it would be necessary, but it turns out in a hex grid you really just need a distance check. So I made the hex grid system, again all based on the original grid system. Doing this was pretty easy, again thanks to how the code is very well written. After that the next important thing was covering pathfinding in a hex grid. Also a pretty easy change, just requires changing how the neighbors are set up and that's about it. So if you want to make hex games, then check out those videos. And also another thing that I made from these videos was a free expansion to my turn-based strategy course, all about converting the course game from a rectangular grid onto a hex grid. Those lectures are free updates, so you can already find them at the end of the course. Perhaps the most important tutorials actually came at the end of the year. Unity finally launched their multiplayer tag called Netcode for Game Objects. It's been ages since Unity had an official multiplayer solution, so it was really awesome to explore this. And it's actually pretty easy to use. I managed to learn the entire song set and make a really detailed video in only about a week. It ended up being one of my most detailed videos ever, over one hour covering pretty much everything Netcode can do. Related to that was how Unity announced something called Unity Gaming Services. This is their brand which contains tons of really useful tools, including many for multiplayer. I covered Unity authentication in a really quick video. This is a required step in working with many of these tools, and thankfully it's super easy to use literally just takes two lines of code and it's done. Then made another super detailed video, this one on Lobby. This is their tool for helping you join players together. It's really easy to use. If you watch my tutorial, I'm sure you'll learn it very quickly. You can even download the project files for that video to get a fully working sample. And related to that is Relay. This is their tool for helping you handle multiplayer connections without having to worry about NAT or firewalls. So all of this is really great news if you've ever wanted to make a multiplayer game. It has literally never been easier. One really awesome tutorial that I'm very proud of is the one on how to interact with NPCs or really any object. I'm really happy with both the quality of the code in that video as well as the demo showcasing it in action. I think anyone who wants to learn how to interact with objects and learn how to do it in a very clean and extensible manner is really going to be very happy with that video. Another really fun tutorial was on how to pick up and drop objects. This is a pretty simple thing, but it's also something that a lot of people might not know how to do. And again, also really happy with the clean code in this one. After making that basic tutorial, I made another one based on it on making a really interesting crafting system. It's based on the game Hydranir, where everything in that game exists in the world, there is no virtual inventory. So the crafting system is all based on placing specific objects in specific places. It's a really unique, very interesting crafting system. 
Then I made a tutorial on how to handle perfect weapon aiming using IK. This was the one part that was missing from my third person shooter tutorial, so I covered it in this separate video. It's all based on animation rigging, which I also covered in detail back in 21. If you don't know about this package, definitely go watch my video on it, it's super useful. Another tutorial using that package is the one on making animations without actually making animations. Basically how you can use IK to make some unique animations, like for example picking up an item without having to create a regular animation. It's a pretty useful thing to know for people like me who really don't know how to make regular animations. For some more basic tutorials, there was one on enabling screen space and inclusion. This is an effect that I really love, it makes everything feel much more grounded and it's super easy to add. Then a tutorial on how to swap your character. This one is also pretty easy, but a little bit tricky depending on how you do it. If you do it right, you can change the character and reuse the same animations. Related to that is a tutorial on character customization. In there I covered multiple methods you can use, each with their pros and cons. I made a quick one on how to change the background color of both the camera and the scene view. Again, something pretty simple, but it's a bit hidden so some people might not know about it. Something else that is super quick and very useful to know is how to fix read-only animations. Also in that video I talk about Unity's limitation on how you cannot edit humanoid animations directly inside Unity, at least not by default, but there's an asset that can help you do that. Another fun tutorial was on inspecting items and objects. This makes great use of render textures to make a really interesting UI which a lot of games use. In the beginning of the year I was playing Elden Ring and I wanted to make something from it, so I made a nice backstab tutorial. It's a pretty fun mechanic to make and it's actually surprisingly easy. Just requires knowing about one specific math function and that's it, everything works. Another really detailed tutorial was on making a complete camera system. I really included all of the features that I could think of related to a camera. So you have a move, rotate, multiple zoom methods, you can click to drag, edge scrolling and a bunch more. If you need a camera system for your game, definitely watch that video, you can download the project files. Then I made two really interesting tutorials on a very unique subject, how to use Microsoft Azure and the cloud in general. It definitely helps to know about this. Cloud is becoming more and more useful, so definitely take some time to learn about it. I'm really happy with the time that I spent researching it. I feel like I added a really useful tool to my skill set. I made a video on cloud in general and then another really detailed one on how to use various cloud tools to make a free online leaderboard. It's a simple thing, but if you learn how to do that, you can immediately imagine all of the other interesting cloud-based mechanics you could make. Then there was a tutorial on how to use addressables. This was a really requested topic for a very long time. It's an excellent tool for helping you manage memory. And actually this is a free sample taken from my Ultimate Unity Overview course. This course is all about teaching you how to use the various Unity tools and features. This lecture was added as the third free update, so by now the course already has over 50 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine. I definitely encourage you to get it if you use Unity in any way. There's lots of useful info on there that wouldn't really work in a regular YouTube video. Then I made a slightly controversial tutorial on why you should be careful with scriptable objects. It was controversial because in the video I talked about one specific quirk that scriptable objects have which make them unsuitable for saving persistent data, and I said you should really only use them for read-only data. Lots of people pointed out how you can use them for read-write, just not for persistent data. So I also made a follow-up video clarifying what I was trying to say. And of course one of my most viewed tutorials is another super detailed one, this time all about Unity Dots, which has finally reached 1.0 preview just a few months ago. It's really awesome that Dots is finally coming out. And now that it's in preview and out of experimental, hopefully there won't be too many code changes, so the code in that tutorial should stay up to date for a very long time. The final 1.0 production rate release is meant to happen in the 22 LTS cycle, meaning around March or April of this year, so I'm really looking forward to that. I truly think Dots is going to be a game changer and enable many more interesting and unique games to be built. So when it's fully out you can definitely count on me to do lots of tutorials on that subject. So as you can see from all this, lots and lots of tutorials on pretty much every single topic. Other than tutorials I also made some really interesting videos. I started a series where I answer all of your questions. I've made sure since the very beginning to always read through the comments every single day and answer as many as I can. So this format is a great way for you to learn from the questions that others have asked, so I definitely would like to do some more of these. Near the end of the year, Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit did an excellent beginner's guide to Unity. When I watched that I started writing a comment which became super huge, so then I turned it into a video containing a bunch of advanced concepts. If you want to learn how to go one step above absolute beginner, definitely check out that video. A really fun video was one where I made three unique games with three unique asset packs. 
Basically, there was a really nice humble bundle happening with lots of awesome assets, and I made it a challenge to see if I could build some unique games based on the assets in those bundles. The games actually came out quite well, despite being made in just a handful of hours. So this video is an excellent example of how you can make some nice mini games with whatever assets you already have. Also part of the reason why I was able to build those games so quickly was because I have quite a lot of experience, I've been making games for over 10 years now. Related to that was a fun video on something that happened during a livestream that perfectly showcases the power of experience. It's how I saw an error happening while I was working on a project, and because I had seen that error before I quickly knew how to fix it. So experience truly is a magical thing. Another quick clip from my live streams was one where I had a very annoying issue that perfectly exemplifies why you should not use strings. Strings are very brittle, it's actually one of the things that I cover in the other advanced concepts video. In this clip I went crazy for a while because I had an invisible space, so strings truly are horrible for identifying things. Later in the year there was also another bundle, and once again I used some tools from it to try to make a really awesome art style. For me, as someone with no artistic skill, it's a great thing that these assets exist. It's only because of that that I can build something that actually looks good. Throughout the year I only made one How It's Made video. It was on the V Rising Sunlight mechanic. Really fun game and it was a really great video to make. I really would like to make more of these, I always enjoy researching and building these mechanics. But sadly these videos don't really get that many views while being a ton of work, so I'd love to do more but it's a bit tricky. I also made a video on how I learned Blender in 10 hours. I was quite impressed with what I managed to learn in such a short period of time. As long as you focus and you follow a good course, it's amazing what you can learn so quickly. I really should get back to doing some basic 3D modeling, haven't done it in quite a few months. Then a really nice video was on how I made XCOM in 25 hours. This was basically the prototype that I built to prepare for making the turn-based strategy course. It was really fun working on this prototype. And you can look at that video and then watch the course to see the difference. You will see how the course code is quite a bit better. That's the main benefit of making a prototype. You can get things working and then you can clean them up. If you want to learn all about Unity URP, there's an excellent free ebook that you can learn from. I made a really nice video going through that entire ebook and picking out some interesting highlights. I definitely learned a bunch of things myself from that ebook. If you want to speed up game development, I made a really nice video on a ton of tools you can pick up from the store that can really help you. The store has tons of stuff and like I showed in the assets video for my own Steam game, I am indeed using a bunch of these tools to help my own development. Another really great video was the one on completed devlogs. There's tons and tons of devlogs on YouTube, so I thought it would be fun to go ahead and search for which ones had already been completed, there's actually quite a bunch of them. It's really interesting to watch a game go from nothing to published on Steam. There was a video highlighting a new feature on the website, a simple search bar. It's a simple thing, but also very useful. I've already done over 600 videos that cover all kinds of topics, so having a nice search bar really helps. Personally, I use it all the time when people ask questions and I know that I have a video on that topic. It works better for me than the regular YouTube search bar. also published a really nice free asset, the Hell System. Funnily enough, the Hell System tutorial was actually the very first video I made on this channel all the way back in 2018, so it was really great to grab that and make a proper and improved free asset based on that. I definitely would like to do a bunch more assets this year. And I also finally updated the general channel trailer. The last one was already over 3 years old, so it was definitely due for an update. If you have some friends who would like to learn game development, go ahead and send them the link to that trailer. Hopefully they will enjoy it, as well as all the videos on this channel. So these are my own highlights, but I'm not the only person doing tutorials or game dev content, so let's see some other great content creators that you might not know about. For some great tutorials, you have TerraDev. Lots of great information with great editing and visuals. My favorite video was probably the one on sine waves. I always love visualization so you can see the math with your eyes. If you don't know about sine, you should definitely learn about it. It's an interesting tool to add to your toolbox that has many use. Then, Yale has one of the most inventive channels I've ever seen. Combining Unity with 3D printing and electronics. Those are two topics that I love playing with but never really have the time. So watching what he creates is really awesome. My favorite video was the one on making a robot arm. It has several joints which gives it a ton of freedom to move around, really impressive. All of his videos showcase how you can take knowledge you gather with game development, meaning programming and 3D modeling, and how with a little bit of electronics you can bring your visions back into the real world. Then most of you probably already know Blackthorn Prod. This year he started a very successful series on making a game that is built by several developers without communicating. It's a really interesting idea and despite having no communication the final games do come out great. I actually participated in the very first one of these. I don't normally do collabs because I'm always way too busy with my own projects, but I'm glad I participated in this one, certainly a very unique, very interesting experience. Next is iHeart Game Dev. 
Also great, very detailed tutorials with excellent editing and animation so you can really learn. My favorite video is how he has a really detailed series on making a very complex character controller. Then several people pointed out some sneaky potential problems with that controller and he made a video explaining the problems and how to fix them. Really nice. Beyond those, there are many more great Unity content creators. There's too many to cover them all. If you want to learn about Unity Dots, then the channel to follow is Turbo Mix Games. Johnny pretty much does exclusively Dots content. He keeps up to date with every new release and every new feature. Then a channel I just found out recently is Lamb Academy. Reminds me of my own channel when I got started and I did nothing but tutorials non-stop on all kinds of topics. Sam Yam also has some interesting videos. She recently made a website for searching through AI textures, really useful. The channel Game Maker's Toolkit also just recently did a great beginner video. Also, he's still in the process of making his own game in his developing series, so these are always some of the best devlogs. And not really a common creator, but the official Unity channel also has some great videos, especially the ones from the recent Unite 22. They're all free on their YouTube channel. I've only had time to watch a few of these, but they were all very interesting. Alright, so that was 2022. Looking back, it's really quite insane how many of these topics I covered and how many things I built. Some of these feel like they were made a lifetime ago, but it was really just one year. It really goes to show how if you do something every single day, even if it doesn't seem like much, it definitely adds up over the course of a year. So take that advice and apply it to your own games. Do something, no matter how tiny, every single day, and in one year you will have made a ton of progress. And I genuinely hope you found the videos useful and they helped you learn on your own game development journey. This channel really only exists because all of you watch the videos, so sincerely thank you for watching the videos. I hope to keep making many more interesting videos to inspire and teach you for many, many years to come. So thanks again for watching in 22 and stay tuned for an awesome 23.